not my movie, but the actual Assassin's Creed films. Oh, you'd be excited by that. Do you know who the director is? Um, I I can't remember. It's somebody uh, quite famous. Okay. You'd be very excited. Why why is that such a great film to you? Oh, no. uh, Topic, game, or just... Uh, You know, it's if you look at the movies that are based off uh, video games, uh, there are very, very few of them that actually are any good. I don't know why. It just doesn't translate into, into film. And I, I, I can understand that. I think if you're playing a game, uh, you are the character in that game. Maybe not directly. Maybe you see the character from a third-person perspective. But, you know, if it's a horror game, for example, you uh, you literally control that, that character. And if so, some monster suddenly pops up, you have to... Uh, your your heart is racing and you have to jump out of, of the way. And, and you cannot replicate that in the movie at all. There's no way you, you can do that. Very... I've watched horror movies, uh, some that are considered very good ones, and some that people consider very scary. But but honestly, I, I didn't get any jumps from it. It just doesn't. That interaction is not not there because you know that it's an actor, and in the game you know that it's you, and that right. that is the difference. Can you think of one that did uh, translate? Okay, I, I'm, the whole topic is pretty interesting yeah to think that this day and age there are games so popular and yeah. so there is so much i avoid them at all costs now because i'm mm. too addictive you know the years i've spent with sim city oh, and yeah. even the sims yeah. you right. know as a single man in, in a, on a beach town wasting my entire life like when i should be out yeah well, you know well that me anyway that i look back and go oh geez i i, I spent a lot of time Trying some, to progress on a game. Some games are literally a waste of time. You know? It's just a time killer. Uh, for, you mentioned The Sims, for example. This is a typical example of a game that has basically no goal. It has no real objective. You can play it forever and ever and ever. There is there is really nothing you can you can reach. But uh, I'm playing right now a game called Ori and the Blind Forest. I recommend this game for everybody it's a great platformer um, and you can see the the production that went into the game you know it's nowadays it's not just some guys in a in a basement making some code uh, they hire uh, a music composer and that music composer hires a whole orchestra and now they're making music for, for that game and and you're getting like really top quality almost Hollywood-level music in, in a video game. So I think the whole business has transformed in the last 20 years. And I, I'm lucky to, to have been alive in that time and actually have seen the entire progress. You, you just remind me, a year ago, after I did this podcast with you, uh, I spoke to a guy called Richie Casper in Tokyo. He was a game developer. Right. And he, had, uh, he was an American guy, but he'd been living in Tokyo for 10 years. Their whole Black Tower Production Company is their their company. They go for games now. They they I mean, uh, on your phone games mm-hmm. for Jap- for Japanese people on the train. So the they've worked out you know the you're pretty much going to be playing a game for forty minutes standing up on a train. Yeah. So they've gone deep into that app based games, but they're very serious about it. And there's yeah, yeah. something like five designers, and they work in the yeah. office every day. Just you know, and they work on a. I wish I could think of the name of their games right now, but. Um, that really was really surprising to me. Yeah, yeah. a new style of um, so getting back to filmmaking. That's kind of going backwards because back in the day it was a great film. Yep. Then they turned it into a clunky crap game like ET on Atari. Right? Yes, so, yes, yes. So to think characters now are so well, the population is, if anything, we're watching less films. Yeah. And more in your lounge room games that you can talk to your friends. Yeah. Yeah, in fact, my uh, one of my co-hosts on the show, he's very big into, into online gaming. That's that's his thing. So he likes to get online on, on his PS4, I think, and just play with other actual human beings. Um, for me, I I still I'm still kind of old school. I still just like to beat the the machine. Beat the know? time. Beat the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Get to the beat the boss level. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's so tough. But I definitely do understand though. The, Real of playing with other human beings because mm. machine eventually it's predictable and you know what it's going to do but the human being it's 
it's just like you, it can, it can be unpredictable. So. Yes. I was just, I, I can't remember the story, but I, I just met a, someone who, they are working on something like that. I'll oh, forget it, forget it. <laughs> I can't remember it. I was just talking about how, how this kid had played video games his entire life and the idea of, of uh, gaming and speaking to friends around the world yeah. is relatively new to me yeah, yeah, yeah. and to my mum, <laughs> so to speak. But these kids have done it their entire life. So to be a 17-year-old kid, you've been doing that for seven years, you know, 10, 10 years you've been yeah, yeah. online and you have your friends there. Yeah. Well, this this story goes that they, they uh, met a kid who's got a, that's what it was, um, uh, he has a very popular YouTube channel, millions of views, everything is going great, but he is actually socially hard work. Like, yeah. he would rather email, even though he lives in the same apartment block. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, you know, but the other guys are a little old. Like, come on, let's just have a coffee and we'll talk about this thing. Or, well, you know, right? I'm right. gaming. Yeah, <laughs> I'm then, awake. I'm gaming. I think we are doing an experiment right now, and we don't really know the the long term effects of that. So I see a lot of parents, for example, they don't really want to deal with their with their kids. So uh, here, take take this iPad, just go go play. You know, uh, we don't unfortunately because this is very new technology. We do not know the long-term effects of this kind of parenting. And I, I think, in my opinion, I can kind of predict, though, what it's going to be. And this is exactly what you're saying. It's going to be those type of people who have the um, social skills of a mole rat, you know? Mm. Um, yeah, just multiple years of, of that. Yeah. Just, it's obvious. Yeah. You know what I saw today? It was beautiful. And, and again, like I, I just said, my wife struggles to... <laughs> to because we've been married or together for 15 years. So anything I want to do, she goes, oh, whatever. <laughs> so it's, a, it's a good joke. It's a good yeah, laugh. Yeah, yeah. I forced her to go to the Kananzaki Museum of Modern Art, okay. okay, which is just around the corner from where we are in Yokosuka. And come on, I forced her to come. My brother was on, had a day off. Let's go, let's go, let's go. But we saw one of the greatest things ever that, that relates to what you just said. Someone had made a series of... I think his name was Roku. Roku, a Japanese guy, made a series of paintings that were quite cute, mm -hmm. only the size of, say, an A3 sheet, sideways, landscape, you know, and every one of them were he and his sister uh, in the different seasons of Japan in sort of like 1976, 1978. Mm -hmm. So for my wife, she sort of related to every single one of them. Oh, it's raining outside, but here he is playing a little boat in the sink while his mum... Sure, sure. They were so sweet, like so sweet, and obviously they're in a, a huge gallery, so everyone had the same thing. But in effect, they were almost cartoon-like. Yeah. But the, the reason they were so popular was just because this guy could translate a very honest time right. where there were no iPads. It was all about hiding under a boat yeah. in the backyard while a storm is in the mountain. Yeah. And we were, we were transfixed. Yeah. Why am I getting to that? That's a great bit of filmmaking. Yeah. You do have to agree? Yeah, yeah. To get people to get that feeling out of themselves from the pictures and the, and the audio that you're, the senses yeah, that you're yeah, trying yeah. to sure, throw. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, I think now it's just, you know, people are are so absorbed by, by those tiny screens and we, we just, instead of going out there and looking at the world, we, uh, we just lock ourselves into the cubicles we call apartments in, in huge buildings with other people that are sharing other cubicles. I don't know. It's yeah. Where will it end? We yeah. are the guinea pigs. Yeah. We are the experiment. Yeah. And I know for, for being a parent myself, you know, and put it this way, when, when our fathers, you know, if I was from raised in the seventies and eighties, definitely our fathers were working and they were the grumpy men in the chair Yeah. and you didn't want to mess with them. And if you had a problem, you went to mum. Right. Right. And, and, you know, just avoid dad if he yeah, you know, yeah, looks yeah, like yeah. he's upset, you know. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, if it's this day and age now, I'm the guy that goes, I want to give them an iPad. Please just get away from me for a mm -hmm. minute. I, you know, I'm, I'm, for some reason, I'm not ready for this. My wife could seem, seem to handle that stuff and, and take that, them out of their hands. Mm -hmm. What am I getting at with this? I don't know. I don't know either. Let's go back, back to the film. All right. Um, uh, were you happy with the ending? 
Do, you know, where? Yeah. How, how do you make so much? Did you, did you actually plot this? Like, uh, oh yeah, yeah. There were definitely uh, every movie should start with a script. You you, you should never. Um, yeah, you, even uh, even if you watch the Angry Video Game Nerd on YouTube, for example, he's a guy who reviews video games. Very popular. He, even he writes scripts for, for his videos. He actually he you have to you have to choose a part of a game specifically that you want to talk about. I want to talk about this part, and I want to say this about this part, and this joke comes here. So you you have to script it out. Otherwise, it's it's a mess. You don't know what you're doing. So script is, is the first time, the first thing you need to do. Uh, I mean, and um, if you if you write a script, to be honest with you, the, the easiest parts are always the beginning and the end because you know how it's going to start and you know how it's going to end. The toughest part is that middle, and I hate that middle part. It's that seventy five percent, pretty much, of the film that I call a filler. It's just something that you you have to put in there, but. It's where producers in, introduce characters. Yeah. What if we yeah. have the pretty girl, like the Hollywood? Yeah, yeah. Storyline. Right. Yeah. Of course, each script has a has a structure. So you know, you, you roughly divide it into fifteen minutes for the intro, fifteen minutes for the end, and how much you need in in the middle, with a couple of what we call plot points, and that's where. That's kind of something you say or some action that you do that 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 uh, changes dramatically into the next section. So that I had to well, think about that mm -hmm. when I was writing. Yeah. But but the ending, yeah, I was very happy with it. Uh, it just for me being in Japan, uh, Mount Fuji popped into my mind immediately, and I'm like, okay, we 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 need to go to uh, Mount Fuji to do that last shot. I know what I'm gonna say, but. Just having that mountain behind me—that's that's gonna complete the, the picture. Brilliant. What? Well, um, who? Uh, I know that the South Park guys, that they spent their entire career, uh, for want of a better word, like the um, blockbuster filmmakers. Um, Zuckenheimer? What's his name? No, no. Uh, Barry. They made that uh, puppeteer film. Okay. What was that called? Uh, Team America World Police. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it, they, at the end they went, oh, we will never do that again. Because they, they're filmmakers. They've made um, basketball. and But they actually made a blockbuster film out of puppets. The puppets were incredibly hard in their own languages. But they realized um, the art of, of explosions and blowing things up and it, that filmmaking, they... They learnt to appreciate those cheese ball directors a whole lot more mm -hmm. because, you know, um, which is an art in itself to yeah, yeah. command thousands of people oh, with yeah. timings and explosions. And, and have you ever been on that kind of set or would you have any interest? Oh, I, I would definitely have interest. Yeah, I've never been on a, on a big set. I think the, the biggest crew that I had was maybe, maybe 10 people. Um, you know, it, it depends. I'm I'm not a fan of big crews because it depends on the people you get, if, especially if it's new people. You don't know those people. You don't know if they have a, a super high ego or which they generally do. Some of them do, and then it just becomes impossible to, to work with. So I, I prefer to go with a with a small team, but very motivated people, and we know what we want to do, and uh, everybody's. We don't want to waste time. Uh, let, let's just go. You know. The worst thing that can happen really is you, you, you just you're in the middle of some intense shot, and then somebody says, "Ah, oh, well, uh, I want to go eat something," and then everything just just completely grinds to a halt for like, for an hour, and then it's very very difficult for, as a director to to pick up again and to, to lift those people up again and to get going. So, right. especially when you're trying to create, I mean, you've got actors. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Wow. Documentary is the way to go, right? <laughs> well, it's um, that's what I can do at this point. You know, in Japan, it's, it's very hard to get people because everybody wants money. I can't pay. I can't pay the people. I'm very honest about that. Uh, but that limits me immensely. Actually, it just kind of binds my my hands in this in this country. I can't do what I want to do sometimes. I have an intern idea here or uh, oh, actually that's a some some do and but 
it depends how they are how they are educated you see because if they